Welcome back to the show this morning. Daily graphic, uh, motorway loses a shine, slams illegal U-turns, reduce road to street. The big one there, and uh, the uh, insolvent microfinance companies to face court. That's on the Daily Graphic. The Ghanaian Times says, baby, four others die in tardy flats. Uh, sad one there, certainly we'll talk about flats this morning. The finder says, nearly 1.2 million depositors, uh, that's about 1 billion uh, cities rescued uh, as a result of the closure of 386 microfinance companies. Business Journal uh, has a front page comment, flat here, flats there, flats everywhere. The Daily Guide, Sheikh Abba Jiari, Kanadamwa heads customs and trouble over Ghana beyond a design. And the BNFT open up tour for private investors. Those are the big ones on some of the papers I have this one. My guest to do the talking, MP4 uh, Sekendi, uh, member of the NPP, Honorable Andre Jepat Messai is here. Good morning. Good morning. I right. hope you're doing great. It's been a while. Well, mm. It was a terrible weekend. It is. Yeah. Uh, you know, the rains uh, came over the weekend, and Friday night, uh, some flooding in the secondary constituency. Fortunately, I just got in out of Accra to Adana on a parliamentary committee business uh, to deliberate on the cyber security bill and the, uh, that the ministry is contemplating, you know, laying before parliament. Just when I got there, I was hit with the terrible news of the flooding indeed the family that uh, lost five uh, children uh, i know i know the uh, gentleman involved personally mm -hmm. uh, i grew up with him in european town in second day isaac Amwa, and uh, my sincere condolences to him and his entire family uh, so having returned back to accra last night uh, necessarily have to uh, mobilize and hit the constituency today so uh commiserate with all the people all right. who uh, were affected We'll, 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 talk about, rings, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, 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 the Takra disaster this morning. And then member of parliament for the Dudu du, du, du constituency, a member of the NDC, Honorable uh, Neil Ante Van der Poyce. Good morning. Good uh, morning. Hope you're doing good. I'm blessed. Mm. You'll be missing for a long time. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. Let's start this morning. Now, if you take a look at page 16 of the Daily Graphic, and that story um, talks about what happened in a community called Indonesia in uh, uh, the second D. Um, I'm trying to pick that story, uh, Metropolis, uh, where we're told about that incident leading to the results. But let me quickly also remind you that today is June uh, 3, and so uh, we're taking a look at what really might have happened. But before I tell you that, let's take the Ghanaian Times and go to page uh, 25. If we take a look at page 25, the story uh, talks about that accident or that tragedy in um, Second D. It says that uh, in Jerusalem, a fishing community at Esikado, a suburb of the Second D, Takwad Metropolis, on Friday, uh, we're told that five people, including a one year old girl, died uh, when a home on which in, in which he was sleeping collapsed on them. Uh, we're told that after heavy rains, a tree uh, got uprooted and crushed the house. Uh, Ahmad Deche, 13, Clement Ahim, 9, Emmanuel Annan, 7, Beatrice Amwa, one year old, and Auntie Amma, uh, were those who died on arrival at the Skado Hospital. Uh, the bodies have been deposited at the Fianquanta uh, morgue. That's the story. If you take a look at the business journal, the front page talks about flats here, flats there, flats everywhere. Let's certainly start a conversation from uh, Takra. Honorable Jepamesa, let me give the chance to start with this. It, we cannot treat this as an isolated case. Flats and what happens anytime they come. We, we should pay more attention than we are doing now. Is that it? Uh, absolutely. And uh, let me just take the opportunity to say good morning to our cherished uh, viewers, uh, particularly those in my constituency, second D. Mm -hmm. and, uh, as I indicated, um, uh, it's, it's pretty uh, heart wrenching because uh, Friday night, uh, Isaac Amwa mm -hmm. called me when he took the, 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 the family to the hospital. You know, so I was pretty much well informed of, of the events as they, they panned out. Uh, but like you said, last Wednesday we experienced the floods in Accra. And I believe the week before, uh, 
uh, other parts of this country uh, have experienced flooding following the rains as well, uh, including the Sekendi Takradi metropolis over the weekend. So clearly, question that one asks is, is it the case that all our drains across the country are choked or that it is some other phenomenon uh, we know the spate of this global warming that we are all confronted with is it the situation that that is what is catching up with us fast and that we ought to take some steps you know to uh, as it were uh, develop mechanisms to ensure that uh, we change our lifestyle, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of our contribution towards uh, degradation of our environment uh, uh, to reverse the global change, uh, I mean, global warming menace. Uh, what are our commitments to the Paris Accord that we signed? Are we abiding by them? Uh, is the international community paying close attention? Of course, uh, we've heard the US President Trump clearly indicating that he doesn't believe in global warming and has consequently resulted from uh, the Paris Accord uh, is it the right step to take uh, if America is not uh, intended on abiding by that accord what are other nations doing uh, you know these are broad questions that needs to engage us of course I know that uh, in some communities in Zekendi that uh, experience the flooding uh, mm -hmm. The way issues relating to uh, uh, drains, uh, the Adiambra area, for example. Right. I know that contracts have been awarded for uh, the desilting of a major drain in the Adiambra community, uh, but uh, the contractor had not moved to site as of the Friday, so they experienced some flooding. On the contrary, Isaman community, uh, they've done extensive desilting. You know, uh, indeed, the assemblyman, when he heard that uh, in Jamoba came, uh, which is also within his uh, uh, jurisdiction, was flooded. He moved there, and by the time he got back to his own house in less than 10 minutes, mm. his uh, house was flooded. His room was completely awash with rain. So question is, uh, and that the certain had been done, you know, so what, what really mm. accounted for, uh, you know, the flooding of those communities? That's why I said that, you know, clearly it cannot be the case that all our gutters across the country, our drains have not been cleaned up. I know people embark on communal labor regularly to desilt our drains and all that. So these are broader questions that ought to engage us as a nation uh, within the global context and to see what it is that we can all contribute to ensure that uh, uh, the rains that should bring us relief should provide us with adequate water for, you know, uh, farming, even drinking, and all that, uh, rather is tending to be the one that is creating calamities for us. Uh, it's not it's not the best way to go. Of course, I mean, if you look even uh, on, on, on the other side of the world, uh, in the Indian uh, Peninsula and even in the United States last week uh, in the Midwest, uh, we saw the, uh, you know, devastation that the uh, rainstorms brought to some communities, you know, uh, uh, in the Louisiana area and all those places. So I guess that uh, these things ought to be something that ought to engage our minds. Mm. Of course, I agree that uh, some of these things are preventable, you know, uh, if we had quickly or expeditiously dealt with some of our desilting issues, if we had deployed long-term measures to, you know, as it were, build bigger drains to uh, deal with some of the uh, situations that we have in Accra, and I guess other parts of the country, uh, the impact will be minimal as opposed to what it is that we are feeling today. So I guess that uh, you will realize that I've uh, deliberately strayed off uh, uh, political because for me, uh, it's not going to help the conversation. Mm. Uh, governments from 1957 to date have had to deal with uh, flooding situations in Accra particularly. Uh, it is not entirely usual in other parts of Ghana, but 
these days we hear of them. You know, I don't recall major flooding in Second D growing up. Of course, a couple of years ago we had an incident, you know, in the Second D township and uh, in the uh, Isaman Njisia area. I mean, Isaman and uh, uh, Njamobekem area because of the nature of the topography, experience flooding every now and then. But increasingly, you know, uh, these things are getting on a bigger scale. I see. And, and back to Accra, uh, uh, of course, when my brother was in government, they sought to attempt raising some funding to solve the problem uh, with the Conti project that did not materialize. And so we should all, as a country, commit to uh, uh, giving indication to government of the need for us to find long-term solutions you know, to, to these problems that, problem. that confront us all. You said uh, you, you don't recall uh, flooding, but is it, is, it, is, it, is it worrying, or how worrying is it that, for instance, I mean, the Mankasim White House stretch, I and mean, that's a very popular road in, 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 in Takra, the, the Apunwe area, we're told that all those areas are flooding now. What possibly could be the reason? Well, uh, I guess that the experts may have to tell us. Mm. You know, uh, uh, like I said, these were not usual in the past. You know, and I don't believe that it is as a result of uh, clogging of our drainage systems. Probably the population growth and, and, and the lack of expansion of these facilities clearly would impact the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, damage that the rains when they come down. With, with the building on waterways, you know, because uh, I think there's some lagoon behind the airport uh, enclave. Uh, that have flows uh, onto absolutely. that Absolutely, and, and people have built in all those areas. And so clearly, if the rains come and they cannot find way into their natural uh, 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 domain, you know, then they would find other areas to, to people's to home, onto streets. Okay. And these are the kinds of problems that we, we get. Uh, I'll get come to you from back. We're, we're tying what happened uh, June 3, some uh, years ago. But honorable uh, Neil the point. So it, it could be a, an issue of climate change, but we can also rule out the fact that, like he said, it, it, people might have built on certain uh, water bodies resulting in these uh, uh, waters finding their ways wherever uh, 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 they can. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let me take the opportunity to commiserate with my brother and also the family of the five lost souls mm -hmm. in Second Day. Well, anything that touches the people of Second Day, they also touches me by extension. So um, I want to say um, my condolences to those families. Just as, I, as we celebrate the fourth anniversary of the June 3rd disaster today, uh, I think that it's good this is happening that we can as a people we can ask ourselves whether we've learned some lessons but before that limited opportunity of wishing the people of Gamashi, especially the Lantijawe clan today they will start the processes towards lifting of the ban on drama and noise making by today uh, harvesting their ma so as early at nine o'clock the Lantijawe clan will harvest their their uh, crop and then to be followed tomorrow by the Sakumo, and then um, Friday with Bese and Kole. And hopefully, uh, we shall next week, by next week, we shall have the lifting of the ban on drama and noise making uh, uh, to life. Gamashi will be back. Back to life. <laughs> okay. uh, you know what happens? There's somebody in this studio, I wouldn't mention his name. Oh, okay. He spends his Thursdays the whole night in that area when I we see. lift the ban. I know, I know the person. Meanwhile, the person claims to be. <laughs> One of the big voices in Anglican Church. <laughs> I know what he does. Me, you have given, you have, you have given Johnny out. Oh, did I mention him? <laughs> okay, let's go on. <laughs> <laughs> you have given a man out. Let me also take the opportunity of uh, thanking Almighty Allah for preserving the lives and the peace and showing mercy to all Muslims in the world and especially in this country and in my constituency specifically throughout this period of Ramadan. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, by the grace of Almighty Allah, we shall celebrate Eid al-Fitri. Let me commend the Muslim clerics, the chief imam, the officer of the chief imam, of all, all Muslim chiefs, 
and especially those within the Gamu, the Ghana Adamwe Muslim Union, and also the traditional chiefs of Accra for coming into an agreement, a wonderful agreement that has postponed virtually the celebrations of Idi Fitri to next week. Because of the ban on drama and noise making, um, there was a need for both sides to come together and talk about how we could celebrate Idi Fitri without necessarily infringing on the traditional rights of the Ghana people. And there has been an amicable resolution of this. Normally on Saturday, the chiefs go around with music and fun and pageantry. Mm -hmm. But because of the ban on drama and noise making, they've agreed to postpone that to next week. And that is commendable. It tells us that this country can achieve a lot when side, both sides, when people sit down to talk and agree and come to conclusions. Let me take this opportunity to say that once we are doing that in Accra, I'll be expecting that our people in Chiripone will also be able to sit down today and be able to agree, to come to a consensus on how to prevent the carnage that is going on in that part of the country. Back to the issue of the floods. Let me, I have said that it is not the issue of the flats. It's the management of the flats. I have been an assembly member. I have been deputy local government minister. I have been in this part of the country. We've experienced flats and flats and flats. June 3rd is not different from what we are, we are seeing today. But just that June 3rd has in this consequence, the fire that came up and created a lot more lives. Let me say that the key issue is management. You see, I, I will not also want to be political, but to some extent, let me say this. If you wait until the rain sets in and you want to do the silting, you want to do dredging, then you have not managed the problem well. You've not done what basically says prevention is better than cure. You are, you are, you are embarking on the curative measures when you could have prevented the situation from happening. Over the period, uh, let me say, what we have done uh, when we were in government, what we did, was that we know the rain patterns of this country. We know when the rain sets in. So preceding the, the, that period, what government, Minister of Local Government does was to embark on what we call routine maintenance regimes to make sure that the major drains, the secondary drains, the primary drains, the arterial drains and the rest are all dislodged and desilted. So that when it happens, when the rainy season sets in, there will be free flow of water. So in that case, there is a, at least a level of management that will not necessarily lead to fatalities. But at this time, I don't know what really happened. Uh, I had the AMA chief executive, for example, coming up to say that last year they spent 1.5 billion on the Silton. I had the Minister of Works and Housing coming to say that they spent 197 million Ghana cities. And then I had the Minister of Water and Sanitation also coming to say they spent 200 million. If we spend these monies, then we shouldn't be where we are. You understand? I have. I have faulted the president and the government of and the MPP. I have said that whoever advised the president to set up the Ministry of Water and Sanitation did not advise him well. One of the main causes of this issue is the fact that me and you, all of us, two people, are watching over the cattle, and the cattle is going missing. Do you know something? Explain it. The responsibility of the maintenance of these drains and all those things in the past have been the responsibility of the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. You set up a Ministry of Water and Sanitation. You give them budget. So you take money from here and get, give it to these people. Meanwhile, the job and the functions are still in the districts, in the municipalities, in the metros, the jobs are still with the Minister of Local Government. And they don't have the resources to be able to embark upon this. If you go to the assemblies, the assemblies are saddled with this responsibility, but they don't have the resources to be able to embark upon this. This is a difficulty. As a member of the Local Government Committee of Parliament, we just go around the country, and this is a reality. That's the problem on the ground. It's the issue. Mr. Ajisua said that uh, the AMA, for instance, uh, does not have the capacity they to do drains. They don't have. Because the money that should have come That's to AMA has gone to the Minister of 
water and sanitation. So where are they going to get the money to be able to embark upon that aggressive desil thing that they have to do? So I think that um, we should pray that the rains do not cause more havoc. We should pray that the level of the rains so far will not be what we anticipated because the meteor people are also saying that the heavier rains are coming. And you and I know that getting to June, second week, third week to July, we have heavy rains. Um, I saw a machine uh, uh, d doing some work in the door. When the machine was working, it started raining. So they have to stop work. Meanwhile, we could have done this weeks and weeks and weeks before so that there will be free flow. I, I seriously think that what we should be looking at as a country, I agree with Mesa, the infrastructure we have was constructed years ago. Mm. Our infrastructure development has not been commensurate with the increased population. And also when you have a sort of population what is becoming more and more indisciplined, attitudes of people are becoming very, very unwarranted. That because I, I grew up in Accra where you have no power, no rights. You, have, you, you can't have that sense of irresponsibility to dump into the rain, to throw refuse into the drain. To, to, you, you can't. It's not possible. But today, it's done everywhere. And even places like this, he's talking, there's no way you could do those things in Takrade some time ago. But you go through Takrade, and the, all the drains are choked with refuse, with debris, with silt, and the rest, all the places. So once these things are doing what should happen to us in decision making, in management, is the fact that we have to be proactive. Mm. So if we used to do two desilting in a year, because of the increased you know, irresponsibilities of people and the attitude and the rest, what we need to is to do more. If we can't do our advocacy well to get people to change their mindsets, then what we should do is that we should do more than what we were doing before in order to meet the demands of the time. And these are things I think that we have not done in the past and it's gotten it to this level. Honor uh, Mesa, let me get you to come in, then we can move on to the microphone. So it, 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 he says perhaps management isn't really, we're not getting it right. But, you know, uh, uh, right, the fact do not support the assertion that Milanti, my very good friend here, is making. <laughs> because if that was the case, we should never have experienced any flooding situation in Accra under their watch. Because if they were planning ahead and made sure that all the primary, secondary, and tertiary drains mm -hmm. were cleared because they knew the rain for parting, mm -hmm. June 3 would not have happened four years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's, you see. So like so I always say, no, hold on, you hold on, it's hold on, hold on. No, please. Problem. No, you say you see, flooding you don't all think the time. They have been flooding hold since Nkrumah. It's Absolutely. the management. So it's the why management. are you faulting His Excellency the President? Well, he, and this he, government for he, lack he, of he planning. That, that's why, that, I, no, you see, uh, no, right. Mm -hmm. There is a problem. Mm -hmm. We can choose to dance and play political chaskele around it. Or we can decide that for once, let's put the political aside and say to government that, look, we know that we have debt issues on our hands. Our revenue as a country is not sufficient to solve all our problems today. But on this one, there is bipartisan consensus that go out there into the market, source the requisite funding, and fix the drains today. That's the kind of conversation we should be having. Okay? Let's not try and play the blame game. You went to construct Circle Dubai, modern infrastructure. Look at what happens there. What has happened? Clearly, the engineering was not right. Which so, part? whose job is okay. to fix it now? The of course, it is. The no, hold on. Honorable, honorable, honorable Lilante, please, you see? please don't, don't interrupt. Oh, okay. At all times, it is government's responsibility. Exactly. We cannot depart away from that. Mm. And I'm prepared to stick to that at all times. Okay? We know the problem. So why is it it's fixed? It. We cannot continue to spend mega amounts to desilt when we know that that desilting is only temporary. 
So what do we do? We and that's ought to find the money to do it. And the Minister of Works problem. has indicated, even last week he was speaking, that he is intended on convincing cabinet to buy into his plan of raising the requisite amount of money that is needed to ensure that this problem is fixed once and for all. And that's the kind of conversation that I think we should be having. But it's not it the same thing on Abu No, that's not what he's saying. That he it's an has, issue of no, resources. You see, he says it's an issue of management. And that if this problem had been managed properly by following the rainfall pattern and cleaning all the drains prior to the rains setting in, wouldn't be having this problem. Is, is it, it, and I'm it, saying... Is, that, is, it, is that it right to really, have the excavator digging when it is raining? Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I've said. What are you saying? I'm saying that these excavation, desilting of drains, whatever the timing, okay? Mm. It's not... The, last week, we were seeing video of people who were cleaning the, the drain and another person standing there and dumping, mm. okay? So these are only temporary short-term measures. That really is not going to solve the problem on a permanent basis. It is the requisite funding that we all know. You attempted but to until, raise until funding until from until 20 until Mesa, in excess of 700 Mesa, million. If that money had come, Mesa, we wouldn't be having until this conversation Until we get today. the funding, will, will it not be appropriate to start the silting way before the rain starts? Right. We've we will not, we will not be needs. Okay, statement we've desilted mm. over the years mm. and we still have flooding in Accra. But if we don't have the money, and we, I'm we saying that, but of course, we need to find the money now. We cannot keep postponing the problem by attributing the flooding to lack of desilting every year. That obviously hasn't helped us. Are we going to continue desilting till when? We need to find the money to fix the problem once and for all. The designs are all there, he knows. Okay, mm. except that it is the funding that has always been our problem. Okay, and so let's buy the bullet, get government to do it, stop playing politics with it, and make sure that this thing is done. How, how so is that, it? How is it politics? What do you mean when you say it is politics? He sat here because and, the, the and decision to that, find the no, money is, see, is political. Don't you think so? Of course, yeah, because we, government has to we take, have, we make have, decisions. We have, that decision we, is political. So when you say no, we should stop politicking, how see, do you right, mean? Explain. You don't, don't pretend as if you didn't sit here and hear him say that uh, they, when they were in government, made sure that dredging of drains took place prior to the rain, mm. and that that necessarily led to lack of flooding in Accra. And, and I'm saying, no, say that. that's say what that. he said. He didn't say mitigation that. of the effect. He didn't say of that. The he was talking but about mitigation. June Ted clearly. Okay, defeats you, you, that honorable, argument honorable entirely. Nilanti, I'll, I'll come to you. The incident of four years ago was major flooding that led to the fire. If you had done all the preliminary works at the time, that rain flooding should not have happened. So I'm saying that that clearly cannot be the, 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 the reason. I know that the outdoor dredging contract was awarded during your era. Mm -hmm. What has happened? Okay, and so, and so it's been mm -hmm. renewed. Okay, we, we know what the, the problems question, are. Honorable Messer, okay, the key so, question so for is, me, you see, dredging right. when it is raining, is that not a problem? Right. You disagree with that one? That we should drag no, before I, the rain starts? I, I haven't said so. What are you saying? I'm saying that let's not politicize the issue and attribute blame to one government or the other because if you say that when you dredge prior to the rain setting in, mm. the flooding would be minimal. Clearly, there is a factual situation that I pointed out to you, which defeats that argument. So it is not an issue of dredging, because that has been proven to be short-term and doesn't yield the desired result. I'm saying that the problem requires long-term, huge financial input today. So let us urge government to find the money, regardless of all that the impact will be on our balance sheet and fix this problem now that is all the point that i'm making okay honorable yeah. that's a reaction I, I just i just want to make a small point here is it Mesa, um i just don't want us to look at accra what is happening today is happening in your constituency it's happening okay. enough it's happening in other places so generally there will be that decision that government must look for the huge funding that it will require mm. to look at our drainage situation the, throughout the whole country i agree with you okay. perfectly but today what I am saying is that the situation we are having today, having gone around the country, what I've experienced, the fact that the 
delineation of duty and responsibility between local government and water and sanitation has rendered some level of we know that these ministries don't work in a silo. No, but but let me tell you. Okay, they there is always Mesa, I can tell you. Ministerial collaboration. I can, I can tell you. All the way from I the top can tell you. To the, to, oh, no, Mesa, I can you tell you. Level. Level. I can all tell right. you these things. Sometimes you talk is on paper. You human beings, even the same ministry, ministers and deputies have problems working together. So what are you talking about? It's, you should be careful. You, you, you don't presume. Me and you, don't, you we know, don't presume that people are supposed to work together and we're supposed to make sure that, I work my brother, how do we collaborate to ensure? It is not always the case. Two, I just want you to I'll refer something. When June 3rd happened, what happened? Immediately after, there was that decision that we could do something about it. We agree that up to that time, we never expected that level. No, it happened. Local government brought in trucks, equipment, logistics. We mobilized, at that time, they have not been decommissioned. We mobilized them straight from the Thema port to make sure that is. And we had the expertise of engineers and planners to do that. From there, we also awarded contracts to uh, dredge masters. masters yes. to, your, your government came to power and canceled the contract and suspended that contract. When he says it's been renewed, I, I yeah, it's been renewed. That's why he said he says the word it's been renewed. If you believe that, if dredge masters had continued from 2016 up to today, or from 2017 up to today, you think we could have we will have what we have? No, you and I should agree. I'm not. I'm not aware that dredge master was prevented from working. Yeah, he, was suspended. Oh, well, me, well, it's my constituency. I know. Me. And I engage with Dredge Master. I said, why have you stopped the work? I said, government have suspended the contract. Well, they had that. What I know. Like the way all the road contracts they, were also they suspended. They seized the work because they hadn't been paid. Okay. And the payment was not made even when you were in power. So I'm saying that. I know okay, this as a matter of fact. And you know if, that I know. Yeah, I know that you know. And you also know that I know. Yeah, so, so let's, the let's issue make is that, progress. Yeah, okay. issue, so I'm saying that the issue, we must accept the fact that in some, yes. So what? What are we going to do? We are going to sit down until we get that money. We will not waste money on the Silton. We will not do dredging. And then the rains will continue to battle us and to kill. And now we're seeing it is not a crap. Today, if we are seeing the same thing happen in second day, we should be worried. If the same thing is happening in Sunyani, places where we've never had flooding before, mm. and those places are getting flooded, even in Accra here, certain areas in Accra where we've never seen floods before are getting flooded today, uh, we should uh, be worried as the people. It's Legon. It's Legon. We should be worried. And that's what I'm taking. It's the management of the situation we have. That is what is leading to that. So let's see how we resolve those problems. And then we can look at the bigger picture. Because that picture we are talking about cannot be, cannot be done today. Me and you, we have to go back to parliament. We, the government will have to look for the funding. They have to bring it to parliament. And it will go through processes. And for one year or two years, if you're not careful, and we say we're, going to, we're not going to spend any money on this thing, we may have this problem occurring again next year. But okay, let me get Aisha to read some money. comments, and but then we can, we can continue. Aisha, good morning once again. Good morning, Bright. Uh, the first one is coming from Far Farouk from Tamale, and he says, good morning. Mm, four years down the line, no lesson has been learned regards to uh, June 3rd disasters. Should we continue this way as a country? Time will tell. May their souls rest in peace. Uh, uh, this one says, is Van der Poel talking about prayers to stop the rains? Everybody in Ghana only believes in prayers rather than taking actions. Are we serious? This is coming from Amenya Glo uh, from Bachuna Spintex. Uh, Charles Nyame from as Saman Kese says, the country has been hit with floods, killing innocent citizens. And instead of this government to wake up to its responsibilities and show proactive leadership, they are still shamelessly shifting blame and pointing accusing fingers at the NDC. This is the reason why some of us keep saying the NPP is never an alternative to good governance. Clearly, they came to talk about uh, but not to work. Good morning to Mark Oliver Kevano of Afram Plains South. Uh, this one also says, the reason why problems in Ghana cannot be solved is that after Dr. Kram Nkrumah, Ghana has not had a leader. We only have politician, uh, politicians 
who will only do things that will keep them in power, they will not solve the problems because they need a campaign message. Please, we need leaders in Ghana, not politicians. Uh, this one says, good morning, Senior Bright. If a stone is falling from above, everyone covers their head. So Andrew and the MPP government should fix the drainage problem in Ghana and stop justifying with other foreign land. My condolence to the bereaved family, uh, Adakudugu, uh, ben from Boku sent this one to us. This one says, good morning, Bright. Remind the Honorable MP of Second D that if the monthly cleaning exercise initiated across the country by John Germani Mahama had not been stopped by this clueless MPP government, this flooding in most parts of our country would not have been widespread. Ishaku sent this one from Tamale. Uh, this one says, uh, Bright, good morning. Let the MPPNP know that if he wants a minister uh, position, he should uh, do the right thing than everything he wants to, than making everything political. Uh, I have followed him from afar, and he should stop that and deal with the issues. Aka Ekumfi sent this one to us. The very last one says, good morning, Bright. Rain kills families of five, and NDC is exhibiting mischief. Bright, don't aid the NDC man on his mischief. This government is do doing nothing in solving flood issues. Uh, this is coming from Adam Swale from Tamale. And these are some of the comments that we've gotten this morning, Bright. Grateful. Keep them coming. We'll be reading um, them in the course of the show. But let's start with the microfinance uh, quickly. Uh, we're told that um, over 300 of them have been asked to uh, shut down. Uh, the Bank of Ghana says that uh, some of them were not actually operating. Um, 137 are those that are working now. And um, uh, the Bank of Ghana is suggesting that those uh, found culpable will uh, face the law. It's a, it's a story that broke before we went to bed last Friday. I'm sure you know more about that. Uh, so uh, the cleanup has gone to the microfinance sector. Uh, perhaps um, it is expected to strengthen uh, that sector too. But they, at the receiving end are small businesses and they rely on these microfinance companies. How do they take this and find other ways to develop their businesses? Well, thankfully, not all microfinance companies have been closed down. Mm. Uh, 386. Uh, it's a significant number by all accounts. Mm. Uh, leaving, I believe, 137 uh, to operate across the country. Mm. And so, to that extent, you may see that uh, uh, their uh, ability to uh, source from various uh, uh, options has been reduced by the numbers uh, that, that, that have been uh, uh, available to them now. Uh, you need to necessarily just suppose that against uh, a weakened microfinance space uh, where in excess of 49% of these companies that have been closed down today had actually folded up on their own because they couldn't meet uh, their obligations as and when they felt due. Uh, that had a huge impact on the financial system. Uh, depositors who had placed their monies with these institutions clearly could not source them. Uh, they equally could not trace some of the customers that they had lent monies out to to recover to enable them to. So, you know, the, 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 the was a real problem that needed uh, some regulatory intervention. And I've had some experts speak on the matter. Mm. Uh, since last Friday, uh, I heard Mr. Richmond de uh, who is a banking consultant, say that uh, this is a step in the right direction. In fact, he thought that uh, even the decision was long overdue. Uh, uh, I heard uh, Mr. Joe Jackson over the weekend indicate that uh, it's a useful step, necessary step that the Bank of Ghana had taken. Of course, I've heard counter arguments uh, relating to job losses mm. and all that. You know, uh, uh, question is, uh, which is preferable? Leaving these institutions, which I think 
many of them should not be enough licensed in the first place. You know, because the microfinance regime, obviously, from all that has emerged, uh, was weak. You know, in terms of the regulation, uh, and 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 so right from the DKM days, the Bank of Ghana should have done what was required in closing down many of these institutions so that we can bring some sanity into their operations, at least maintain the strong ones that uh, could withstand whatever shocks that came onto the market. But that was not done. Uh, you know, uh, I guess that based on these same reasons of, well, if we close them down, people were going to lose their jobs and all that, as opposed to they collapsing on their own or leaving it to damage the entire financial system. It was a choice that the regulator had to make. And I think that the decision to close them down, you know, uh, uh, as has been confirmed by various experts who have spoken on the subject matter, uh, Bank of Ghana should be commended. But beyond that, uh, follow through with the promise to hold the directors and the shareholders of these companies who have essentially thrown caution to the winds and have done things that clearly were untoward, mm. uh, bordering on criminal, you know, uh, to account. Uh, this is, has been an ongoing process. We know the issue with all the banks that were closed or consolidated in the past few years. Uh, uh, dire consequences that those uh, inaction, if you like, had caused on the financial system, such that government had had to inject taxpayers' funds, monies that could have done some routes, some hospitals, some schools, into saving depositors. Mm. Huge sums of money running into billions of Ghana cities. You know, that has impacted our public debt. But people close their eyes and say that, oh, uh, government has borrowed. <laughs> Nothing to show for. And forgetting that all these remedial measures that had had to be taken, difficult as they are, is what it is that has contributed to the strengthening of the financial space today. And so I think that the Bank of Ghana should go the full haul. Uh, I understand that some savings and loans companies are also uh, uh, in, in, in the works, uh, except that uh, uh, government's finances are overstretched. And so they are unable to find the monies to ensure that uh, uh, those actions that they need to take in the savings and loan space as well is taken. But I would urge that, uh, and, and a blue that is inevitably yours, earlier encountered extricates you from further torrential hostilities. And so uh, government should buy the bullet, do the needful, sanitize the space once and for all. Uh, yes, there will be some fallout, but uh, I guess that the alternative mm. uh, is clearly undesirable. And, and, and so uh, they ought to do what is right. And going forward, strengthen the regulatory regime apply sanctions when they are required. Leave the famanyame to the back burner, focused to ensure that the financial system, which is the backbone of our economy, uh, is, is, is beyond reproach. The integrity of that system is maintained at all times. And, and Ghana will be the better for it. Grateful. Honorable uh, Nilanti, so that's it. Uh, so uh, clean the space so that we have a, a, a financial sector that can support economic growth. Well, um, to some extent, let me say yes. Everybody will wish that we have a very viable and strong financial sector. We have a very re resilient financial industry that will be able to withstand some of the difficulties we have, especially the external difficulties. But this whole issue of uh, cleaning up the sector, I, th I thought that could have been looked at in another way. You see, 
you strengthen institutions. You don't strengthen institutions by causing social problems. And I will explain that. I'm very happy Mesa ended on the issue of regulatory regimes, supervision, making sure the laws are adhered to, response of responsibility, and all those things. When the economic crunch happened in Europe and America, there were two issues. Take the drastic decision of closing them down, doing this, or look at how we can hold it in view of the social impact by regularizing the activities and being more sensitive to our responsibilities of supervision and oversight. And I think the second one was adopted. So all these, the AIGs and all those things rebounded, but with different management styles, directors that were taking huge bonuses, profit margins that were affecting the liquidity of the in financial institutions were all scrapped. People were asked to refund monies and the rest, but there was no collapse. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I yeah, want sure to, no collapses. institutions collapsed themselves, government did not take the decision to collapse. And with this particular microfinance industry, I want to take it from four levels. One, the issue of those that have, on their own, sure. collapsed. And Mr. let me correct you. The 386 constitutes 70% of the institutions involved in this. We have, according to the Bank of Ghana, we have 450 something registered. So if you take the 386 from this, that we are going to have only 74. Mm. Operating now and not had within the system, no, as put up by the bank of because there's another thing you're talking about. There's another 32 that they said are also on the uh, in the theater. So, when you're looking at this, I don't have any problem with those who had folded up who, because of their own problems, had closed down or are not working and all those things. My problem really has to do with those who are functioning but having liquidity challenges. They are having those, we have talked to some of them, at least about three operate within my constituency. The problems they are having is as a result, is a rippling effect of the government and the Bank of Ghana's action with the universal banks. Because these people take the finance, the monies and deposit with these banks. So when you take the action, that drastic action on those banks, Ultimately, it will affect the deposits of these microfinance institutions with these banks. How? Oh, Mesa, if I take money from you and I deposit with Bright, and you take an action against Bright, it will affect me and it will affect you. How? 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 Simple. Simple one, two, three. But the deposits that you place with Bright uh, uh, are secure. Uh, 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 no, have no, no, no lost. Listen, you, listen. Uh, That's why I'm coming. I don't know if you've heard about the, the, the government the says that. that Consolidated bank uh, yes. sitting on the funds or yes. something. Yes, today, funds. as I'm talking today, so you if you take a check, if you take a check of hundred thousand to consolidated bank, they can't pay you all the money. They will tell you they can pay you only fifty thousand. They can do this. So a lot of the microfinance companies are suffering already, and the reason why they not that they, they don't have the money, their monies are locked up with these banks, and they're not getting the money in order to pay out to their customers and people who have also deposited with them. That's the reality. But Two, not all of them. Not, not all, all of, them. of them. I'm talking right. about those who are functioning but now looking insolvent. Right. Those are the ones I'm talking about. So it means that they, 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 they are on drip, but then they have life. They may be biologically uh, uh, alive. alive, but clinically they are dead. <laughs> that is what we are looking at. But what I'm saying is that government itself talking about in the budget i think we approve about one point something billion or something to some government is not able to do it today because they're saying we are validating so if you don't you have not validated you don't know the actual amount that is is is, is there so today assuming government finishes with the validation and it ends up having 2.5 billion Meanwhile, you've budgeted for only one point something billion. Mm. So what happens to other deposited, uh, depositors who fall within the bracket that you may not have the money to pay for immediately? Microfinance institutions, individuals, businesses. 
So at the end of it, the social economic problems that you are creating mm. will be huge than you anticipated solving. The, the other Quickly, side I want to and, and the other side I want to look at is the issue of job losses. I've heard Bank of Ghana saying that there won't be any significant job losses. Because it said some of the uh, uh, finance houses are already shut down. No, but what about those who are suffering now? <laughs> if they are suspending their work, what will happen? Well, one of the things that well, even if there are job losses and it will clean the finance sector, why not? I agree, fine. If they will clean the financial sector, fine, why not? But why are you saying that? Could we have done it another way? Like, that you have secured people their jobs like how and not put pressure on them. What else I'm saying that that's where we say that you do engineering, recapitalization, by changing management styles, principles of work, assigning them, and then make sure that you bring life to them, but that you change the way of doing things to make them more productive. But that's the same okay. liquidity uh, support uh, uh, that you give to these uh, banks. Quickly before I wrap up, and, and we uh, know uh, the case of this. Please, quickly it. before I wrap up, this other no, argument I mean, has it, has it come to your notice too please. that the consolidated bank uh, uh, is indebted to some of these houses that are, uh, are operating, and so that's why they are struggling. I I'm not aware, but it, it will that. be strange to me that they are, because their funds are locked down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Quickly, I'm wrapping up. So the the bank with consolidated bank they, like they you and take I bank. deposit and went and, and but put is it that there. what they're supposed to do huh and then, but when microfinance they take when they take money but no, they're they, put they in the provide bank. small loans no but i'm saying that when they so, take so money, i'm saying that mm. if they bank with consolidated bank like you and i do it's it's not it's not a by putting our monies in these banks mm -hmm. as depositors mm -hmm. how is that money lost because they, they cannot get that money from the house, house. Bank. Because when they go there, they, the bank is unable and, to and pay. And hold on, hold on, hold on. How is that going to affect their operations? Because they, can, they can't have the money to... Okay, search that. But you see, the problem, you need to go into detail as to what the real okay. reasons are. Okay. These people right. can't generate enough funds to pay their depositors. Okay, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. I have to wrap up. Honorable Andre, the Prime Minister, MP for oh, Second D, so a member of the NPP. Honorable Neil Ante, MP for the Dudu, a member of the NDC. I'm grateful for your Monday morning. Stay here.